is the mayor doing here with his official <laughs> regalia? Well, just here to support the exhibition. Um, the exhibition um, brings people into the town, and we're, we're very grateful for the this that does get to the economy each, yeah. each year that's held here. Yeah. This is the first year it's been held in this building. Hey, this is just uh, new. This is uh, the back row. Tell me a little bit about this layout, what it's all about. Well, it's uh, well, Moorhead Sidings and uh, it's uh, the club of Halvet for quite a number of years now. And where are you based? We're based in Houston Street Primary School, right. uh, meeting on Mondays and Thursday nights from 7.30 to 10. And do they have their all their own engines to bring to the club or the, the club? Yes. Engine? No, well, uh, no, we'll usually bring our own engines. And I do have some carriages and, and uh, trucks. So these would be your own engines, but a, but a club-owned scenery sort of. Oh well, that's was all owned by by the, the club. Yes, yeah. the scenery is owned by the club. But this little thing that I'm looking at down here, which says up on it, you're controlling some of the trains from here. Yes, the the up what we call this the upline and the downline. Yes. And this is controlling the upline. Mm. At the far end, this uh, is controlling the downline. And who's that at the far end controlling? That's uh, Harvey Glen. It's uh, control at the moment. Uh, we'll do about half an hour uh, at a time. Uh, I'm Peter, Peter McVigar, and this is the American Eight Show Switching Day out based on West and based in Western United States in the mid 1990s. The voltage is at 11.1 volts at 0.02 amps at the moment. And do all the engines have sound in them? Or no, just no, just the three or four on the moment. Most of them do not have sound. It gets quite expensive putting sound yeah, in them. Yeah. <laughs> do, you build, do you build the scenery? Do you build these kits? Or do you, like, every, every gold built from the kits are a scratch built, except the next of the cacti which are purchased. My name is Charlie Petty yeah. from DC Kits and Models in Leeds and we do full range of over a hundred different diesel, electric, multiple unit sounds all under the under the train name of Lego Man before because it's just a silly name <laughs> and people remember silly names. Uh, starting up sound decoders have various functions you can do up to 20 different sounds on top of what the engine sound is yeah. um, but that's very difficult with a lot of diesel since they don't have 20 different sounds yeah. unless you have the driver talking which you could do if you wanted yeah. to but in reality you wouldn't hear him do you control the sound separately from the speed of the train on the track or is that the sound governed by the speed the train's going? The way the sounds work is you can do it in different ways but the way we do it on these decoders is we mimic exactly what would happen when the driver pulls his power handle yeah. so you can't push an extra button to rev the engine anymore because that doesn't happen on a real train. You've got to scroll through the menu to find the locomotive there you go. So if I start it, it will...
Uh, your name is? M Michael Delaney. Uh, and you're from? Model Railway Society of Ireland in Dublin. Right. And tell me a little bit about this. It's based on car carbon. It's based on three periods of the history of car carbon. Yeah. And at the, the uh, opening sequence here is Roaches Point Lighthouse, right. which is down at car carbon. And we have the coaster coming in. Now the period is supposed to be you know, 1943, yeah. to say January 1943, and the coaster has picked up 164 survivors from a battle in the Bay of Biscay. Right. And she's bringing them into Landham at Cork. Mm -hmm. The coaster is scratch built and the lighthouse was scratch built from, from drawings. Uh, have you moved up a bit? The, the next sequence is the uh, the naval service, uh, MTB, motor torpedo boat, going out just to check the incoming ship. And, uh, overhead we have a Walrus aircraft at the Air Corps. Uh, there again, the period is around the 1940s, they had uh, three of them. But one of them was preserved in the museum in Hendon in London actually. And when we move further up we have, actually have the, the fort itself. Yes. And the fort is based on Fort Candom in Cork, which is one of the forts that enters the Cork. There was a, a small gun emplacement about eight miles from the fort, which had 9.2 inch guns, heavy guns. Yeah. For the sake of the model, I brought them in, yeah. actually, on, on the fort. We lowered out the fort uh, on the ramp lower, uh, launching ramp there, is um, a Brennan torpedo. Yes. This was developed in the 1880s, went out in, in about the 19, uh, 1892, yeah. when the long range guns came into position. It was the first war-guided war missile, it was invented by a chap from Mayo. It was installed in Malta, in one of the forts in the south of England, and in Cork. And they were talking of uh, installing some forts in uh, Australia. Yes. It was very effective, never fired in anger, but any time it was fired in practice, it always hit its target. It had a range of about two miles. And the, the, on the fort itself, we see the, the change over from Irish troops and English troops to Irish troops in 1938. So you have the, the company of Royal Engineers who garrisoned the fort, they're marching out, and the Irish troops are given the salute as they march out, uh, taken over by Irish coastal artillery. Yeah. I have a, 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 you can see the red van there, Patty yeah. News. Yeah. If you look on your computer, you'll see Patty News did actually take film of the, the sequence. Right. Yeah. Yeah.